Where can you find some of the best of the Bowtie breed? It's the Menard Chevy Show, and this week we come to you from deep in the heart of Texas. They say everything is big in Texas, and when they coined that phrase, they were probably talking about the Texas Motorplex. It was built in 1986, and it was the first super track in the country. I'm Dave Dobson, and this is the Menard Chevy Show. Well, if you've ever been to Texas, you know the folks here love their pickup trucks, and they love their classic pickup trucks, and this fabulous 57 belongs to Stephen Cato. Stephen, You've done everything on this truck. What do you call it? I call it the Mutt. What kind of parts are uh, thrown into this thing? Well, how I came up with the name is it's sitting on a C4 Corvette suspension, 1987. Uh, it's got an engine out of a 06 Cadillac Escalade. Uh, the seats come out of a 91 Chevy Suburban. So it's kind of a entourage of things thrown together. And of course, these wheels are uh, taller than me. What do you have on it? Uh, what I have is 4G autos. I have uh, 24s in the back and 22s in the front, and I had them custom made for the truck to fit on it. The interior, like I said, were seats out of a 91 Chevy Suburban. What we did, normally the bucket seats are really tall. We cut them so it wouldn't stick out of the back window of the view as much, and we had them wrapped uh, with black leather with red stitching, with perforation and uh, insert, perforated insert. So, with that, and uh, we've got a suede headliner. Uh, we've got LED lights glowing at night. Uh, we've got navigation inside with rear view camera, uh, cold AC. And the Cadillac engine, what kind of power does it make? Uh, well, we've got a mild cam in it with flat top pistons. And when I had it dynoed, it dynoed at about 520 at the wheel. How did you find this truck and what did you do with it once you found it? Well, I looked, searched far and wide uh, for this truck and I found it in Granbury, Texas, and uh, it was a rust bucket. You wouldn't believe that this is the same truck. So uh, with a few other donor, donor trucks, we put together this truck here, but it took about three years on this build. Didn't have to walk too far to find another fabulous 57 Chevy pickup. This one belongs to Lawrence Harper, a buddy of Stevens. Correct. Tell, tell us about this 57. This 57 is one that came from California. It uh, was a great body to start with, so I didn't have to deal with all the rust as normal you, you have to do. And good build, you know, the truck had a long bed on it, cut the bed, shortened the bed, and decided I want to put a big block Chevy in it to make some real good horsepower. So it's a 427 big block Chevy with a set of Maryland heads on it and 871 blower with two 750 Hollies on it, and it will turn the tires back in the back. You know? Let's talk about the tires and wheels. What do you have on it? The wheels are Boyd Coddington's. Uh, they are kind of a one-off design. You don't hardly see them anymore. And, and uh, something that you just don't see every day is the reason I like them so much. You know? Looks like you cannibalized some seats for the interior. Where are those from? Now, those seats came from a custom builder that builds seats basically for older trucks. Fit like a glove. Actually has a cooler in the bottom. Fold down center armrest and really, really comfortable leather seats. Speaking of really neat, the uh, wood in the back of the bed Looks pretty sweet. Did you do that yourself? I did that myself. Cedar wood. I always loved cedar, you know, and I, my guys, my buddies all talk, told me I was crazy for using cedar, but hey, it looks good. I like it, and I might change it someday, but for right now, it's pretty sharp, and the price was right. <laughs> 70 bucks worth the wood, you know. And the price of the labor was right. The labor was right because I did most of it myself. This week's Rock Auto Restored Award goes to Doug Picar. His 79 Camaro was a labor of love. How long did it take you to find this car and what, what were you looking for in a Camaro? It took me about three, three and a half years to find this car. I was specific, I wanted a 79 Real Z28. I wanted this color, um, code 24, bright blue. I had to have T-tops and I wanted a four speed car and it wasn't the easiest thing to find. And what did you do to it once you got it home? I spent five years I'm doing a frame off nut and bolt restoration. I worked for a company called Supercar Creations at the time and the owner was a stand up guy, real nice, let me keep the car in the shop. After work I spent long nights in the back corner of the shop just building the car. How much in the car is original and uh, what's it got under the hood? It's got a 350 Chevrolet under the hood. 
Um, when I bought the car, it was just a bare shell, no motor, no trans. I sourced um, as many correct date coded parts as I could find and just rebuilt the car with as many NOS and old original restored parts I could find. My wife was a big part of the restoration. She was always by my side and when the time come to get all the nuts and bolts ready to be sent out to be plated, she spent many hours in front of a cabinet blaster, bead blasting all the nuts and bolts for me. When the car was up on the rotisserie, her fingers were a lot smaller than mine, so she was able to sand all the little nooks and crannies underneath of the car and got it all prepped out ready for me and helped with the assembly and reading the manuals and finding out which way bolts were supposed to go. She was definitely a big part of it. A lot of guys don't get that support, so you're very lucky, aren't you? I'm more than lucky. Recently, our son's come old enough where he's able to been riding it and had the T-tops off and slammed it in the second gear, and he had a big old smile on his face. Congratulations to Oklahoma's Doug Picar on his Rock Auto Restored Award. More from the Menard Chevy Show, Texas style. Menard Chevy Show is brought to you by Clamp Tight, the clamp making tool. DJS Fabrications, the best mobile car dolly built today. Steel Rubber Products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Show. While some hot cars tear up the track, we check out some more cool cars back in the pits including the winner of this week's OPGI Original Award. Well, Tim Lane was looking for a 1970 Chevelle, and he found it up in Kentucky. Now, Tim, everything was looking great until you got it home. What happened? Until I got it home and realized that this was not the car of my dreams, I was driving it home one night and uh, definitely uh, felt something going on with the transmission. Found out the clutch just blew up on me, so I limped it home. And uh, the next day, we took it apart. I thought, eh, maybe I'll get that clutch put in it and we'll get back on the road again. That didn't work out that way. I'm too picky. So I tore this car, car completely apart and restored it to what you see today. It took about a year and a half. What things on this car are original? Well, I guess you'd say the whole drivetrain is original. You know, we worked around that. It's, a, it's an original SS numbers matching car. Uh, but as far as the original sheet metal, the only thing that was originally on the car was the roof and the floor pan. Everything else I've changed. Fenders, door skins quarters, everything. The story like yours, one that, that started <laughs> with tragedy and ended in triumph, what does it feel like to come out smelling like a rose on that? Well, I mean, I love the car. I've always loved the car since I was in high school. I've always loved the car. So to see the car finished and remembering what I remember as a kid, it's, it's awesome. I love it. What are your plans for the future? I'm not sure. I, I, I love the car. I don't have any real plans to sell the car. After all that, uh, do you feel like it was worth it? Oh, for sure. Look at today. It's a great day. Yeah. It's, it's nice to see people appreciate what you've done. And that's how you win the OPGI Original Award. Nice job, Tim Lane. The McPherson brothers have a really impressive stable of cars here. We've got a Plymouth and a couple of Corvettes. And, of course, the one we're talking about here, Glenn, is your 1967 Corvette with a 427. Tell us about this beauty. It's 427, 390 horse. Power steering, power brakes, factory air, all original, numbers matching. Got now less than 900 miles on it from restoration. And did you guys do the restoration yourself? No, sir, I bought it that way in Arizona. How did you find this thing? On the internet. Now, you and your brother have everybody's dream job as your retirement job. Uh, tell me about that. Well, we decided we'd go into what was supposed to be a small buy, sell, trade, collect, and it's blossomed into 85 cars. What's it like driving this Corvette? Wonderful. It drives like a brand new one. Good cold air conditioning. Can't get any better than the four speed air conditioning, power steering, and power brakes with, a, with that big old 427 up front. Our next car is naturally cool, and it's brought to you by Zing T. How did you find this vehicle? Well, I was up at um, Pate Swap Me. And there was a guy out there had it. Uh, he hadn't quite all finished it, so I bought it. I was on my way to buy a, another one that was to build. Found this one, and it was a better deal. And loved it. 
kind of condition was it in when you got it? Well, it was painted and everything, and then we just kind of finished a little of the motor work and uh, tires and wheels and uh, did a little chassis work and changed the steering wheel, stuff like that, just, just a little stuff. What's it like to drive it? I love it, man. It drives easy. Turn the air on, one finger, and just, just power steering, and uh, just cool it, man. And no heating problems, nothing, yeah. Really love it. Why a Willis? What drew you to that? Well, when I was a kid, I stayed next to a drag strip. And uh, there was a guy that used to come raised called Stonewood and Cooks. And I loved those guys, and a lot of times my mother wouldn't let me go to the drag strip, but I could lay in my window and hear them. And I knew when that car cranked, I knew the sound of it. And I used to draw pictures and put them on my wall, and I said, when I get able, I'm gonna get me a Willis. So that's how I ended up with them. So now when you close your eyes, are you a kid again racing down the drag strip? <laughs> well, no, I, I really would like for other people to know what it is. A lot of people don't know what a Willis is because they quit making them like pre-war, like 1942. Uh, they started making tanks and stuff and they quit making cars. And then when they went back to make them, they didn't make the cars, they just made a Willis truck. So uh, a lot of people don't know what they are, but man, I love them. And then the ones that do, you know, know what they are. They, they really like my car. And we really like it too. It's from Zing T, and it's naturally cool. And when we come back, more up close looks at Chevrolet style from days gone by as the Menard Chevy show from Ennis continues. Welcome back. There's something for everyone at every Menard Chevy show, and there's some great variety here in Ennis. Mike Murphy owns our next producer's pick, a sweet 1967 Chevelle. I found it in Corsicana, Texas. I've had it eight years. What kind of condition was it in when you bought it? It was all surface rust, pretty much all the interior was ratted out. It needed to be totally gone through. What were some of the biggest obstacles you had when you were restoring this car? Getting the old paint off and to strip it to the metal. How long did all this take you? About a year and a half. So what do you have under the hood and how does it, how does it compare with the, uh, the factory engine? Well, it's 454 now. It was 396 before. 400 turbo, uh, it's original 12 volt. Other than that, you can't really tell much difference in it. And uh, the interior, is it all original as well? Yes, it was just hand stitched by another guy. You know, everybody else wanted too much, so I found him by luck. What's it like driving this thing? Oh, it just, it's a dream on the highway. No problems. A lot of guys have trailer queens and they bring them out to shows and we appreciate those cars as well. But this is one that's a, a driver for you. How much do you drive it? About a thousand miles a year at, at, at the most, just to car shows only. So don't take much chances out on open highway just to cruise. Few cars really make a statement like this 1953 Chevy sedan owned by Noah Prickroll. Noah, just from Waxahachie down the road, how much have you done to this thing? And, and you've had a pretty quick turnaround, haven't you? Yeah, I built this uh, car in 231 days. When I got it, it wasn't finished. We've seen the photos, it wasn't even close to finished. Yeah. Uh, how much have you done to it? Uh, quite a bit. I cut out both quarter panels all the way around the bottom of the trunk, um, all the bodywork, French the headlights. Uh, and then all the bodywork and painted it. So quite a bit of work, all new interior. If I'm not mistaken, the roof line looks a little bit different from the original. Yeah, it's got a three inch chop on it. It was uh, chopped by a place in Athens, Texas uh, called Miller Metal Works in a metal shaping class. I try to drive it every weekend when I can, you know, weather permitting. Uh, of course, I don't drive when it's raining, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun, I enjoy it. You've made a lot of modifications, but there's a lot of things that are still the same on it. Uh, what what have you not touched, or what have you just repaired from what was original? Well, the grill's the same. It's just got extra teeth in it. I try to keep it a, kind of a stock-looking car, but with the with the chop to make it you know custom but unique at the same time. So. The seats look like they're original. What have you done to them? The original seats are just all new covers and uh, new door panels, uh, paint of the dash, custom gauge panel, um, yeah, new carpet. <laughs> uh, do you have any plans to do anything more to it? Uh, I want to change the front end, maybe put a fat man front end under it, with uh, rack and pinion, maybe make it for my wife so my wife can drive it. Um, I'm working on other projects, so 
that's the, my long-term goal is something for my, my wife to drive, to come to the shows with me. Our host this weekend is the Texas Motorplex, and for over 30 years, it's been a model for drag strips everywhere. 2019, uh, we have our streetcar takeover, uh, which is a streetcar-based event. Get around 3,000 spectators, 200 race cars. Um, we're also the Midwest Pro Mod Series we ran this year. We have them coming back as their season opener. That should be in March. Uh, that's featuring 32 Pro Mods, Radio versus the World cars. Uh, that's going to be a huge event um, at the beginning of the year. And then Muscle Car Club Challenge and Port Face Off. One of your biggest events of the season is a non-racing event it's called the Lantern Festival. What's that all about? Uh, the Lantern Festival is a memorial event where families can come and light Chinese balloons. Um, and they can write different sayings on them or I love you, I miss you and such. Uh, we'll average between 10 and 12,000 people for this event. Um, it's pretty amazing. I mean, all of the lanterns are let off at the exact same time. Uh, that's one of our biggest and the most interesting events that we have here. What do you want when racers come here and race at the Texas Motorplex? What do you want the Texas Motorplex experience to be like for them? I want it to be amazing. I want them to leave here knowing that they came to, in my opinion, the best facility in the nation. Uh, I want, when they leave, I want them to know that the hospitality here is amazing, the track service is amazing, and that they can always come back, talk to us, tell us what they'd like to see, and we'll create events around them. And we still have lots planned for the rest of the show. You like tail fins? Well, we got them. Next on the Menard Chevy Show. Menard Chevy Show is brought to you by Heat Shield Products, America's high performance insulation. R3 Performance, quality parts, attention to detail, and innovative design. Champion Cooling Systems, high performance aluminum radiators and by Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Show here in Ennis, Texas. You're looking at some beautiful paintwork on the roof of this 1958 Chevy Del Rey. I am down here. Yeah, that's right, it's a low rider. This is uh, some handiwork by Chubby Loya, and it's just one of the magnificent specimens on display here in Ennis. So take a little trip, take a little trip with me. Let's look at the next car. This car is cool, but I think your story is even cooler. Uh, talk about your affinity for the 57 Chevy. Well, I owned one when I was in high school as a youth, and things happened in my life and caused me to have to sell the car. And uh, in 1981, I sold it and regretted seeing it leave the driveway from the day that it went. And I always talked about getting another car, and over the course of many years, I looked and thought and never did buy one. But a couple of years ago, I was blessed to be healed of cancer and after that I really got serious about finding another car because you know you just don't know if you're ever going to have another tomorrow when you have that kind of an experience so yeah I found this car out in Athens Texas and uh, belonged to an older gentleman that quit driving it and it set up for a long time probably been restored about 20 years ago and I had to do all the typical things to get it back to where you could drive it a lot fixing oil leaks and brakes and such as that so that's where we're at now. Got my car back. I even have my uh, monkey hanging in the mirror. That was the same monkey that was in my first convertible in the, in the 70s. Finding parts for a 57 Chevy can be hard, but finding the monkey seems about near impossible. How'd you find that? I've had the monkey since 1970. I never got rid of him. He's been in everything I've driven. How much do you drive it? I drive it every chance that I can, especially with the top down. I don't even like putting the top up. I park it with the top down. Sonny Hudson is the proud owner of our next producer's pick. Sonny, tell us about this beautiful 67 Camaro. Well, it, uh, I'm the third owner. The first gentleman had it for 26 years. Second owner had it for 25 and died with it. Second owner is the one who put the stereo in it, put the disc brakes on it, and had it repainted the original color back in 2000. So this paint job is um, 18 years old. Drives like a dream. It is just unbelievably smooth. Everything is what it was from day one as shown on the uh, Chevrolet showroom floors. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very uh, unique car. It also has deluxe interior in it, which is a bench seat 
with a fold-down armrest, which makes it appear as if you have bucket seats without a console. And also, with the deluxe interior, it has no dome light. It has two interior lights on the back pillars, which is really cool at night when you open it up with that blue and blue and white interior. Yeah, I do know this that it is. I I have the original bill sheet from the car with a protecto plate. And in the, uh, the bill of sale, you'll see where it's, set. it's got deluxe interior. The guy paid $34 extra for that push button radio. It's no longer in it, but it was not in it when I bought the car. I'm presently seeking one that I might be able to install. You're a car guy. You have, you've had cars you know, in and out of your life. Yeah. What kind of feelings does a cool car invoke in you when you're driving it? Dude, it's about getting recognition. Because people see cars like this that you don't see anymore. Like you'll see this car, they're like these cars that they're uh, driving around here with big blown engines in them and big tires and pipes and all that. And in driving something like this, a classic car like this, you just get a zillion thumbs up. I mean, a guy came by on his Harley and yelled out to me, nice car, <laughs> on the freeway. We hope you enjoyed this Chevrolet show and tell from the Texas Motorplex. Thanks for joining us on the Menard Chevy Show. We hope you join us next time. So long from Ennis.